Hello everyone, welcome to Five. My name is Stephen Alson and today me and Rio are going to be having a look at the five things that we learnt watching the Premier League this weekend. With their 3-0 away at Villa Park on Friday night, Leeds have won back-to-back -back Premier League games for the first time since 2002 and Bamford had a massive part to play in that. Bielsa's number nine netted a hat-trick in 20 second half minutes at Villa Park to give Leeds the three points. Wow, Bamford. Patrick Bamford. I have to hold my hands up and say that I did not expect him to be doing as well as he's doing, I have to say. But the kid's got some talent, the kid's got class. The three finishes at, at Villa Park were absolutely sub -sub sublime. They were beautiful. The one with no, no back lift, bang, top corner. You see the goalkeeper say, Martinez, the keeper goes like, wow. It was just unbelievable. And the other one where he dances in the, in the box, he's like he's on the dance floor in a nightclub. Shuffling his feet, bang, top corner. With those three goals, Bamford has now scored in three successive away games for two successive seasons. Only two other players have managed that feat, Gordon Hodgson in 1937 and Trezor Kandal in 2007. That hat-trick represented his fourth, fifth and sixth goal of the campaign so far and only Calvert-Lewin and Hume Son sit ahead of him in the goal-scoring charts. But you can step up, but you do need part of that being confidence in your manager to, to allow you to go and play. And he's doing that. He's a I watched him train the other day. Uh, I was lucky enough to do that. And even then, you could see his touch, the way he plays, the way he moves. Um, he understands the Bielsa system. Bamford is proving he is ready for the Premier League. Number two, Guardiola's early season struggle continue. City's early season problems continued again at the London Stadium this weekend, a stadium that they've had so much success in recent years. In the last five visits, Manchester City have got a 22-1 aggregate score. The form at the moment, his team are not in form. Eight points in their first five games does not sound like a Guardiola team. Um, they're not finishing teams off. They go against West Ham where they've scored 22 goals against one in previous visits there. The Irons brought an end to their nine-game losing streak against Manchester City, which is the second worst in the club's history. Mikel Antonio provided a top-class bicycle kick before City managed to be bailed out by half-time substitute Phil Foden. I have to say, that probably the only shining light that's been this season probably will be Foden. No one scored more Premier League goals for Man City than him. Goal involvements, only Raheem Sterling's got more. Um, so long may that continue for England's causes, but I think Man City more than anything need to find that consistency, um, which they're struggling for at the moment. Eight points from your first five league games shouldn't raise a lot of eyebrows, but it's Manchester City. It's the most expensively assembled squad ever. And it's also a manager with the pedigree of Pep Guardiola. You would expect them to be doing a lot better. This is Manchester City's worst start since 2014. It does look like this season is going to be impossible to predict. Number three. Home is United's new away. There were some good individual performances for Manchester United against Chelsea at the weekend, Victor Lindelof probably being the pick of all of those. But as a team, it just didn't quite click for them. While Matter looked bright, Edison Cavani shown a little bit of promise and, and really looked like he had something about him when he came off the bench. We hope to see a bit more of that in the near future. And it was a much more improved performance than the one that we saw against Crystal Palace and the demolition at the hands of Tottenham Hotspur. But it was still a boring nil-nil stalemate. Well, the Chelsea game, it wasn't one that you're going to ever write home about or tell your grandkids about, is it? Um, it wasn't a fantastic, inspiring performance. But I think for two teams that have been searching for a bit of form defensively, um, both managers would be happy with the way they defended um, and they kept another clean sheet. I think Man United, I think that's what they've been searching for. I, have for one, along with many other people, have been critical about them defensively. Um, but that's where they look very, very certain in that game. Um, which has got to be something which is a plus and seen like that. And with those two losses and that draw, it is the worst start Manchester United have had to any league campaign since 1972. The poor form started all the way back at the end of last season when we had those disappointing draws with both Southampton and West Ham. Are United missing the crowd? The biggest attendance in England, is that something that United lack? Is that something that United really need to thrive on? Is that home advantage that United usually have disappeared without the fans being there? With Arsenal and RB Leipzig coming to Old Trafford this week, it is a time that United really need to fix up whatever is going on at home and overcome the lack of fans or whatever issue that we have playing at Old Trafford without fans being there. I think not having the fans there is playing a big part. Um, maybe would have got them over the line in this game and pushed them on to get three points. 
They've got Arsenal and RB Leipzig coming up soon. Two tough, big, big games where they need to get points, where they need to win. They need to get some momentum going and they've got to get some three points on the board. So difficult, yes, but I see signs of improvement. Lindelof played very, uh, and, and Maguire played very well at home to Chelsea. Mata, last two games have been very good. And the introduction of Cavani has only got to be a plus point. Just seeing the two chances, the sniffer poacher gold uh, opportunities that he, he, he sniffed out bodes well for the future. So fingers crossed they can keep on improving onwards and upwards. Number four. Everton suffer their first slip up. Everton genuinely look like early season contenders and I know that sounds a little bit giddy to say Everton really but I think with the topsy-turvy league that we're definitely going to see this year and Everton being the only undefeated side in the Premier League going into this weekend, a win here would have been massive for them but they did slip to Ralph Hasenhutl's Southampton. And I think a lot of credit has to go to Ralph Hasenhutl Southampton. I think they, they turned up really well. They're now uh, unbeaten in four games. They've got clean sheets in three of those. They're, they're in some really good form at the moment and they were good for their win. Everton simply did not show up and Luca Dean, now going to be suspended joining Richarlison, puts a little bit of pressure on this Everton squad. Calvert-Lewin has started this season in ballistering form and he was vying with Sergio Aguero to be one of the only players to start a campaign, scoring each of every one of the six games to start a campaign. Now, he didn't manage to do that this weekend and that's perhaps one of the reasons why Everton stuttered against Southampton. He's had such a fantastic start. He's, been on, he's on seven goals in five games. He didn't manage to increase that number this weekend and perhaps one of the reasons he didn't manage to increase it this weekend is he didn't even register a single shot on goal, showing just how well Hassan Hootel's side dealt with the threats that Everton posed. Everton suffered their first slip up of the season. They were on fire. Calvert Lewin, seven goals, stayed on seven goals, they didn't score at the weekend. Um, it's their first blip, and uh, we'll see what they're made of now. How do they react? The top teams normally come back with a positive result after getting beat. This is where we'll see what Everton are made of. Are they going to stay up there? as contenders or are they going to drift off now and, and, and vie for, the, for the, the lower part of the top six? I think we'll, we'll see. I, I fancy them to come back strong. As long as they don't get injuries, I think they'll be fine. Off days happen and I actually do still expect this Everton side to be up in the mixer, especially with no European football to contend with as well. Let's find out what they're really made of. Can they bounce back? Can Ancelotti, I mean, this guy's got more experience than probably the rest of the league put together, Hodgson aside. They are still top of the table, albeit only on goal difference. They missed that opportunity to put some points between them and the rest of the pack. They've got Newcastle coming up this weekend. Let's see if the players will be chomping at the bit to try and get back to winning ways. And number five then, Arsenal cannot handle Jamie Vardy. If ever was a game that just ripped up the script, it was this one. Arsenal are unbeaten in 27 games at home against Leicester City, a run that goes all the way back to 1973. I'm sure Arsenal fans would have been delighted to see Jamie Vardy starting from the bench against them this weekend, but Jamie Vardy does what Jamie Vardy does, and he comes on and he scores, and he, he does that against Arsenal more than anybody else except Wayne Rooney. Vardy was introduced around the hour mark and about 20 minutes later, he redirected Unders Cross into the back of the net. That puts Vardy now at 33 years of age with 11 goals in just 10 starts against Arsenal, which is ridiculous. It's more than he's netted against any other opponent and it's only battered by Wayne Rooney who scored 12 goals against Arsenal. That's 11 goals in 10 starts against Arsenal. Wow, the guys on fire. They don't know what to do. It was a sub. Everyone have been rubbing their hands saying, oh my God, this is... We aren't going to get beat by this today. The main goal scorer is on the bench. He comes off 20 minutes later. Bang! Have that. Arsenal missed opportunities. But Arsenal, I was reading up before. They are, before Sunday night, Arsenal were unbeaten in their last 27 home games. So this is one that you would think you'd fancy them. Leicester, under Brendan Rodgers though, they're a team I feel play fantastic football, but they know exactly how to play under their manager and what instructions he puts out, they go out and perform it. I think they've got players there that you would say are, are players who make impact. I think under the new Turkish boy comes on, assists straight away for Vardy. Great impact, but Arsenal, they've been having a party since party signed. Reality hits home now, they've got to respond. I've said it about Everton and I'm going to say the same thing about Arsenal, is how you respond to these situations. Too many times in the past, Arsenal have not responded in these situations and have gone on runs of being losing games and they drift away. They can't have that happen this season. I think Arteta's been a breath of fresh air at the Emirates. This is now a big, big time for him to say to the boys, listen, you've lost, that's it, we move on. And that's the mentality shift that he has to implement in this squad. Can he do it? 
We'll see. Barry Strike also ended 14 games without a win against Arsenal for Leicester as Arsenal missed out on a golden opportunity to move into the top three and they turned their own fortunes around by not losing three on the bounce by picking up the victory and seeing them move into the top four themselves. At what point do we start talking about Jamie Vardy being a Premier League legend? I mean, after all, he's won the thing which is more than some legends have managed. Well, that's it from me. That's it from Rio. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. We'll be doing this every single weekend. Get your comments in below. What things happened this weekend that we missed? And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.